that is some fruity deliciousness right there. So real quick before we start the show, guys, welcome to the Toasty Podcast. My name is Sky. Maddie B can't be here today. I want to let you guys know, once again, I messed up the audio. I know, imagine that. This time it's not bad as far as the ambient sounds around it. I didn't use the iPhone's mic like last time, but the problem with it was this time I had the gain up too high in a situation with live, because I go live now every Thursday, and I'm not used to it yet. I don't know the software very well just yet. I'm learning it. I used a different mic this time just to try something new to see if I could still see if it would still sound good just in case I have a guest on, and uh, it was not that good. So I apologize for that, guys, but... To get started here, let me go ahead and run down on some things that I ran down on on our podcast because I cut some of it off because it was so bad. The audio gets good around 20 minutes, so I cut into 20 minutes. So whenever you listen to this now, if you're on Spotify or Apple or if you're on YouTube right now watching this, you will start at the 20-minute mark. You will not see all of the bad audio or hear any of the bad audio uh, sections, which is good. But that's why I'm explaining it, so you'll know. I have decided that we are taking the step towards a different type of podcast. I've already told you guys we're going a little bit more political than we normally do, and I get that. Maybe you guys don't like that. I'm not sure. I'm still going to have guests on, though. I'm still going to have the guests on that I normally would have on. It just won't be all completely random topics. I will have them on to talk about you know, life, but if they decide to talk about their job and stuff like that, so be it. Putting people on the spot and asking them to do something that maybe they don't really want to talk about anyway is not really my cup of tea. I don't like doing that. If they're really passionate about it, they'll speak up about it. It may not even be their job. The podcast is now going to be on Sunday nights. That's when we'll start recording. I might have a few other episodes we do during the week to get things rolling, to get things different. The guests may be on different episodes besides, you know, excluding me and Matt, just to give you guys some more content because that's what it's all about. I want to give you guys the best content that I can. Another thing I want to add to that is that whenever I go do the recording on Sunday, it will be live. Right now we're live on Facebook. As soon as we have a thousand subscribers on YouTube, it will be live on YouTube. So if you guys can help me out with that, smash that subscribe button and share the show because that is the way we get anywhere with this is by sharing. Sharing is the number one form of content spreading, of the virality, if you will, of content. It's the share. Also, guys, be sure and go check out my freaking new merch store. It's full of freaking sweet, dope, sick merch. Actually, mainly tops. I don't do pants or shoes or hats or anything like that, just mainly tops. Sweatshirts, you know, tank tops, regular t-shirts, uh, soft tri-blend t-shirts, all of the above. We've got it in stock at the Real Sky Day store. You just go to therealskyday.com and then click on the right little button that says shop. And it'll take you to the store and then you can look around, see what you like. It's not all it's not all just toasty podcast shirts. Some of it will be unrelated to the content because I like I kind of like making shirts and, and making designs. If you guys like it, buy it. All those proceeds go to this actual business, the media company I'm trying to run, so that we can spread the word and get bigger. The bigger we get, the better things get as well for you guys. You guys want real journalism. You guys want real media. You guys want an unbiased source for information or content. Well, this is supposed to be it. If no one speaks out against the censorship and the cancel culture, then who will win? All that to say... Hope you're sticking around for the show. I'm glad you're here. If you're just now coming into the Toasty Podcast, you can find us on all social media platforms as Toasty Podcast, and you can find me on all social media platforms as The Real Sky Day. Let's get toasty. This is the good subject to go on. I like it because I want to talk to you guys about it. Um, just facts that are coming out, things that are coming out, you know, and, and you guys may not see all this stuff. So if you're just joining the show now, uh, this is the Toasty Podcast. My name is Sky, of course, and I go over all these current events and I go over all these politics and I go over society and culture. Love that you guys are here. If you haven't already shared the show, that's how we get famous or get well known or whatever you want to call it. Biden has now asked the U.S. intel community to investigate COVID. Now, the thing is, is that a year ago, I was a conspiracy theorist because I said, I think, dang it, man, the audio is still not good. I want to figure this out, though. It has to be fixed. Okay, I think we're actually good now. 
I am. I just got a just got a guy in that says uh, Blake just said we are actually good still. So that's good to know. Um, it's not as grainy. I guess it was grainy. I I wish I had more you know uh, feedback on that. But the thing is, is that whenever I record these live, when I record these live sessions, um, they go directly. I use that same recording for my podcast and for YouTube. So if the audio is not good, um, then then I I, I can't. I can't do anything, right? This is that's it. That's all I got. So uh, that's why I want to make sure the audio is good. And obviously, obviously, again, shout out to Blake for helping me out there. Uh, I need it to be, I need it to be well done. Back to what I was talking about. On top of all the COVID things you're seeing, I'm gonna head to it. I'm sorry. You know, we're beating a dead horse with this COVID thing, and I think everyone's by this point. I think everyone's fallen on one side or the other. As far as do I take risks? Or do I believe everything the media says and stay it in ho- at home and become pasty? I, I mean, I, I, I can't really. I'm not argue at this point. I'm not going to try to convince anybody. There's no one to convince. I think they've all been convinced of whatever they want to believe. But I still will bring you the latest and greatest from news sources all around the world. So this time it's ABC News. <laughs> ABC News. Holy crap. Biden has asked uh, – there's a lot of news outlets that are saying this too. It's not just ABC News. It's a lot of news outlets. But uh, Biden's asked the U.S. intel com- community to research COVID being created in a lab. And you know what's interesting to me is that last year, going back to what I just said, last year everyone was shout, like, like shot down, like not figuratively. Uh, and they were told like, no, you are, you are a conspiracy theorist or you are crazy or whatever. Because anything that you said that was in line with what Trump said um, got you basically canceled if you were actually a public figure. If you're not, then it just made all the people that were around you that were Democrats hate you, I guess. Um, But that's interesting because now here we are doing the exact same thing. And uh, there's there's so many stories now of how – flip-flopped the media is it goes back and forth in all the time both all of it every every media outlet i know does this it's insane and apparently actually i haven't looked into this myself so i don't know for sure but i was watching a tim pool uh tim cast by the way he's an awesome guy if you guys haven't watched him go watch him but i was watching it and i was seeing that <sighs> apparently all the news outlets are changing their stories like they're going back going to the archives from last year or whenever and actually citing in the story saying we have recently like changed our tune on this basically is what they're saying and that that's insane i i just i can't stand it i cannot stand it but that's why I, that's why i do what i do i do what i do so that i can sift through all the nonsense and get the actual stories uh hopefully the actual stories because you never really know uh that brings me to the next thing fauci is getting called to be resigned uh, to put in his resignation because of all the things ca- happening because of the COVID, because of the flip flop, you know, because now he said he told um, uh, Rand Paul that he actually invested in or gave money to um, Wuhan, the laboratories in Wuhan. They they have they have they've given money to research coronaviruses coming from bats, not COVID nineteen. This is pre COVID nineteen. This is coronaviruses coming from bats because a coronavirus is a type of virus if you guys didn't know that you guys can go research that yourself and figure that out but the coronavirus is not a thing so i shouldn't even say the coronavirus it's a coronavirus there are multiples anyway going back to this yes there's a bunch of republican lawmakers of course the republican calling for this why wouldn't they be and to for him to be fired amid the the whole shifting positions thing now here's the deal about anthony fauci i don't know if you guys know this or have studied this or looked into this at all but the fact is, is that I, I actually be, he's been in he's been in the business for so long he's been in that position for so long I actually think there's there's obvious reasons of why you might not uh, you might not agree with that with him because the thing is he's just like in in my opinion he ends up being similar to other politicians at that point right and I have long stated that I'm not really a fan of politicians to begin with like that's not my thing I'm not here to promote. Uh, Republican Party or the right side or the left side or anybody. I'm not here for that. I'm here to tell you guys why I think the system is broken. Unfortunately, depressing, but uh, that's what's happening. Uh, Because in light of all the things that have happened as far as censorship and everything else, I feel like there needs to be an outlet. There needs to be a way for people to hear real, real things. People that actually investigate 
and find things. And soon enough, if I have enough funding and we have enough, we have, we've built the media company up enough, I will be a guy that goes out and corresponds and finds these things because I would love to do investigative journalism. That'd be sweet. That'd be sick. And honestly, journalism right now is super dead. But uh, anyway, going back to the Fauci thing, I don't know if you guys have researched this at all, but I kind of fell down a rabbit hole the other day looking into this because I have recently watched Dallas Buyers Club for the second time. I'm kind of a movie guy. I get into movies and like I'll, I'll watch movies all the time. The thing is with me is I do things while I watch the movie. I don't watch a movie. Um, well, sometimes I do. I'll get in the zone, watch a movie, turn it on, surround sound, all that stuff. But usually I turn a movie on and I do other things. Just like an just like an audio book, I do all of these things while I watch it, while I'm watching this or whatever. It's background. I still get the gist of it. I still get the main points. It just it helps me to stay involved involved in culture and stay up to date. Essentially, that's all it is. Holy cow! I did not realize how much I could talk. <laughs> Honestly, I know I'm a talker, but but dang, bro. Anyway, so uh, back to the Bet Dallas Buyers Club. In that movie. You know, it's about, you know, Matthew McConaughey plays the, the main character. And it's about this guy. And I'm not sure if it's based on a true story or not. But the interesting thing is it's set in in the 80s or 90s, I think. I'm not positive on that either. <laughs> wow, what kind of research I did. Anyway, so he has to get a, a subscription that's a prescript, prescription that is not available in the U.S. because it's been knocked off the shelves. That prescription drug is called AZT. AZT apparently was a big component to helping uh, keep the symptoms down whenever you have HIV or AIDS, right? The main character in the movie, Matthew McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey gets diagnosed with HIV or AIDS. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember if it was AIDS at that point or not. But um, anyway, all that to say, during that time frame, Fauci was still the person he is right now. In the amount of power he has, the position he has, I think there were another, there was another doctor at that point that was actually had say over the pharmacies, but I'm not sure. The reason that I bring all of this up is because at the same time that this was happening and Fauci was dare, doing all of these st this stuff, he said, of course, it's because of safety. You know, we don't know the the uh, effects of this drug, you know, um, aka hydroxychloroquine hydroxychloroquine <laughs> but nonetheless Matt McConaughey had to get it so he went to Mexico he went to Mexico to get it well while all this is happening he is putting patents in Fauci is putting patents in the reason I know that this was happening is because you can go and look at a list of patents created for you know in the US by Anthony Fauci and other doctors among them for AIDS and HIV for prescri prescriptions different drugs different components of drugs in order to go into that. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm nowhere close to a pharmacist. I'm nowhere close to any of that stuff. So when you read all of these patents, sometimes you kind of get lost, right? I got lost in a lot of words like, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. But if you can kind of get the context, if you read all of it, you'll get the context and you're like, okay, so interesting. So in the early 2000s, he was just getting these patents passed. How long does it take to pass a patent? It can take up to 10 years, depending on what the patent is. It takes a while. It can take a long time, depending on what happens and how it is and how, much, how many tests are involved and all that stuff. So daring Matthew McConaughey, not really Matthew McConaughey, but I can't remember the main character's name, during uh, his trials he was having, facing, to try to get this stuff, he was also profiting because he was like, you know what, screw this. I'm going to go to Mexico, get all these drugs, and sell them. Since America doesn't want to do it, I'm going to do it myself. So it's a black market thing. I'm not condoning any of that stuff. That's not really the point. Um, but uh, the point is saying that in real life, Anthony Fauci was a guy. He was still the same dude. And he has patents uh, for stuff surrounding AIDS and HIV drugs. And it was interesting to me that he would pull it off and call it for safety. Maybe it was for safety, but maybe it was also for his personal gain. All of this just leads me to believe I'm still not going to trust you know, the leaders in our in, in power. That means anybody. I'm not, I'm not just talking about Fauci. I'm not just talking about Biden. I'm not just talking about anyone in power now. I'm talking about literally everyone. Like I might, I might, and I would never, see the thing is, is that what you guys don't get, would you ever, would you ever invite any of these people into your home? Like ever. I would not. Never. Never in a million years could I see myself saying, you know what? come on over Trump even Trump like I, I don't think I would invite these people into my home like as if I have 
as if I have that much of a uh, what do you what do you call that? Much of a fame? Much of a I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, I wouldn't do that. You know, I might say hi to Trump from a distance. You know, and I might say I might say, Rand Paul is a pretty cool guy. That's about it. So all I'm saying is you can't really trust anybody in power. And the people that are looking up to these people like they are gods, it's insane to me. It's insane to me. Whenever you see all of the of the uh, backlash they get or all of the conflicting information that comes out, I'm just surprised. That's all. I'm just very surprised that you guys can still be on this same page, can still be on this tear to just – Make sure that everyone that has chosen not to get a vaccine feels terrible about it. It's this big guilt trip thing, and I, I don't understand it. You know, I'm over that. I'm just I'm just completely over that. Moving on, guys. Moving on. I'm trying to make this short, and it's it's not happening. You know, I had some audio trouble and things like that. But um, if you guys are just joining in, this is the Toasty Podcast. My name's Sky. Maddie B couldn't be here because his wife just had a kid. Freaking awesome. So, anywho, share the show. That's all I can say, really. Share the show. Uh, moving on, I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, Israel and the recent events that have happened with Israel. We all know that they have a ceasefire now. Maybe you didn't know, actually. They have called a ceasefire, but this does not mean much because with the ceasefire, there wasn't any treaties or agreements or anything like that created. Of course, this has happened numerous times in the past. Uh, I think the most recent time was 2012. You guys can go back and see that if you want. The headlines were almost identical. Short battle, and then ceasefire. Short battle, ceasefire. Short battle, ceasefire. And this happens over and over and over and over again. And honestly, I'm to the point where I don't know if I, we should necessarily be meddling in these people's um, wars like that. But I want you guys to understand that we are an ally with Israel. We have been for a long time. And honestly, they're pretty loyal people. I'm just, I'm just becoming, I'm coming up to a point where I might question that whole that whole trifecta there, you know, America, Israel, and Palestinian Authority, or Gaza Strip, or you know, really all of the above, because meanwhile, in April, Biden sends 235 million dollars to Palestinian Authority. You know, I don't want to point any fingers or name any names besides Biden's, <laughs> but I'm I'm sure the Palestinian Authority used that, you know, for the rockets they just launched at Israel. But I'm not positive on that. I'm not sure. Meanwhile, he sent 730-something or maybe it was 20-something million dollars to Israel after this battle had started because they have to replenish their rockets. Now, that transaction, I'd say, is legitimate because we already signed letters. Almost all of Congress signed letters. The House, All, all the House signed letters saying they would not impose any regulations on our trade between Israel. They just wouldn't do it. Um, because we have, they're our ally. You know, that's how that works. You know, you keep to your, your promise, right? And I think people might call for all these things. There, there's a lot of um, tension in America anyway. So, of course, let's throw another one in there. Why not? Because that's what I think the people in power want in the first place. Um, it's just humans, honestly, always causing quarrels, causing problems. But this is interesting. This is a Time article on Yahoo News, so I don't understand how that works. Um Anywho, it took 11 days, but Israel and Hamas finally agreed to a ceasefire that ended their latest round of deadly violence. Here's his points that he's making. I'm just going to get to the points. Number one, this episode exposed Biden's inability to referee this fight. Now, I don't know how much I say I agree with that or don't agree with that because I'm not sure that, honestly, the side I'm on is that we shouldn't even have to referee fights with other countries. That shouldn't happen. I I just, I don't think that should happen. You know, um, it's... I'm not sure, you know. I just I don't think so. I don't know. I guess change my mind. I guess you know because I'm always willing to have that conversation. Number two, Biden's lack of leverage with Israel left him no real influence with Hamas. Now I would say that's probably correct, but I don't know that either because the thing is, earlier I'm, I'm thinking you know a year ago, maybe a couple years ago, I had read an article. I need to go back on it because this is going to be from memory. Uh, that Israel's leaders were calling for they they wanted they just commented it was just commentary they wanted a liberal leader in America. Now the interesting thing to me whenever you see that 
is that they are our, our our ally and run very similar to America. They're a democracy. They, you know, everyone's, you know, equality is a big deal over there. You know, equal rights are a big deal. Um, for the most part, they've been, they've happened. Um, you know, anyone can become a Jew if they want to. That whole thing, the whole, the whole spiel. You know, I could go over the whole spiel. But he asks for a liberal leader in America. What's interesting to me is that, you know. Democratic Party are the ones that seem to want to divide, and so, including Israel. So the leader now seems to want to divide, and I'm not sure why. I'm just watching this from afar. I don't know. I'm not there. You know, it's hard to determine. And so I can see how someone would look at Israel and be like, "This is terrible. Why would anyone want to divide and all that stuff?" Right? But the funny thing is, this all started from rent. I'm not kidding. This small battle we just had, this small skirmish, I'd say small, but people died, so battle, started from rent. Landlords in Jerusalem were asking for their rent and not getting it, so they decided to sue. In America, we call that normal legal action because, well, you get evicted. That's what happens. And so they started to evict people in Israel, and we ended up with what we have now, Israel did not fire first. No matter what you see, Israel did not fire first. So take that with you, however you want to take that. Next point he makes, there is no viable long-term plan to keep this from happening yet again. And there's not. And the thing is, is that even when there's, they've tried to make plans, it hasn't happened. The history for Israel and Palestinian Authority goes back pretty far, but there's been five, I think, four or five total attempts for Israel to give Palestinian a independent state. They have they have literally made up these agreements that are like, you got you know, you guys go ahead. Here's your here's your territories. You guys go ahead. And at one point on the last time we did it. I think they even said you can have the half of Jerusalem that, you know, everyone says never has happened before. And they turned that down as well because they won't take anything but Israel being gone. They don't think it should be a country. They don't see it as a legitimate country. That's the Palestinian Authority towards Israel. That's always been the case. And so, yeah, of course, there's no long-term plan for it to happen again because Palestinian Authority would probably want that to happen again. Um if it, if i see the thing if i see it the way that that things are going now and before what it do, when it does happen again biden won't have any more leverage than he had this time well that's okay sure yes i agree with that too of course because biden i mean he he doesn't have leverage a lot of over a lot of things i he he can barely he's like me talking like he's like he's literally like me talking right now anyway i like stutter a lot i'm trying to go quick or whatever but he's not as quick obviously he is not at the mental capacity, in my opinion, to even have leverage over anything to begin with. He probably gets on stage every time he's going to speak and takes Adderall. I don't know. Seems like it. Congress won't support a pressure campaign even if Biden wanted one. And that's true because they don't want to affect Israel. And this is actually where I got what I just talked about. The House of Representatives signed a letter last month that pledges the U.S. will not impose any conditions on U.S. aid to Israel, meaning they will keep doing exactly what they're doing. No change is made. So, number six, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict unites Republicans and increasingly divides Democrats. Exactly what I was talking about earlier. So, this is where it gets a little bit, you know, iffy to me. This is where I start thinking, what's what? The establishment, in my opinion, wants war, Right? Okay, so if the establishment wants war, then what better way to keep that going than keep a conflict, a constant conflict in the Middle East happening? All you have to do is let them be exactly what they are, and they will have a conflict. And you can sit back and just watch it happen, and then throw some troops in there while you're at it, so you can spend some money for your economy. I, you know, I hate to say it like this, but it's almost like the establishment wants a passive income stream, and that's the Middle East war. Whether it be Israel versus Palestinian Authority, whether it be Gaza Strip versus Israel, whether it be Iran, whether it be any of these things, the Iraqi war, any of these things, that's what they're looking for. And it also, whether it's Republican or Democrat, right? And I think that's why this point is so 
dramatic or such a big deal, has a lot of uh, gravity to it. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict unites Republicans and increasingly divides Democrats. It divides Democrats because I think Democrats are half establishment and half not establishment. You know, Democrats are... I would put them in four parts, but I'll get to that later. Democrats are half establishment, like I just said, and that's all the normal Democrats. These are all the Democrats that really are sitting back and they're like, what the heck is going on? I have no idea. I don't watch the news, but I will always vote Democrat. I don't know why they still do, but honestly, we have people on the sleeping Democrats, you might say. We have people on our side doing the exact same thing, the sleeping Republicans. Our side, I say that. I'm a, kind of a moderate guy, but whatever. It doesn't matter. On the Republican side, we have that too. So it, it, it's, it's, it's interesting to me that that would even be a, a comment. The Democrats, the leftists, the, the extreme leftists, or the ones that are all involved in everything, BLM, uh, woke culture, uh, critical theory. Um, and we, me and Matt might actually dive into that later, critical theory, because it's uh, pretty intense. And it's kind of scary. And... Um, I just don't like always bringing up depressing stuff on, on the show because I want people to actually listen and be like, oh, that's funny, haha. You know, I, it's hard, man. It's hard to do that, especially right now, um, because of the extreme, just just hyper polarization everyone feels, and then of course everyone being scared because of in- inflation. Number seven, Biden's inability to act decisively during this episode will have broader foreign policy implications, and they're right about that. But I'm not sure that that's an inability. A part of me also thinks that it was on purpose. A part of me thinks that the way they handled this was in order to get what they want in the future. You know, I think maybe he stayed out of this. I think maybe he he hung back and waited to see because he, like I said, establishment wants conflict. And we all know if you've ever seen any of pasts, any of the past Biden, which he's still the same guy, you would know that he's definitely part of what we would say is the establishment. So all that to say he would want war. He would want conflict. You know? And I just, that's, it's insane to me. I, I don't agree with that. There's no, there's no big reason for it. Um, you know, and there's arguments against that too. Like, you know, well, there's no reason for war. Are you anti-war? And I'm, I'm like, well, I don't know. I'm not really. I'm kind of there, you know, in a way. But like, I know that there are some big wars that have happened, and they may have needed to happen. They may have been necessary. But what's interesting is it's always been against a, you know, a uh, sociopathic like leader. You know, I say sociopathic lightly because politicians in general seem to be like they might be sociopaths. But uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean like you know Hitler and those guys, you know, uh, dictators. You know, the guys that want to just rule everything, and they they are hindering the globalists uh, agenda if you will if you want to get into that that uh that red pill bro <laughs> anyway i'm gonna continue on here we've gotten done with those things and i am about to read <clears throat> what the heck i guess biden had a speech today and it was about republicans not liking the handouts that they're they're, get, they're being given um which i mean you cannot like a handout but need it i guess the thing is, is that the reason we need the handouts in the first place is because of a, a poor handling of lockdown situations as far as opening back up and taking the risks. See, instead of taking the risk to open back up, we've taken the debt. It's dead, right? And in a trade, you know, you consider that a loss. So we've lost. The next thing is a quick thing. Uh, I'm almost done here, guys. Uh, I love that you guys joined me today. This is awesome. I... I hope the audio towards the ha- midway through got better. Uh, I was told it did. So thank you guys for still listening. If you're still here, um, I'm going to say this one more time. Share the show. You know, that's what we need. We need people to share this this and uh, make it known for everyone out there. Uh, Matty B, like I said, we'll be back next week. Real quick, though, I want to touch on this. The reports of the gunshots near George Floyd um, Square on the anniversary of his death. This is at the memorial that happened um, Tuesday. So there were some shots fired, right? I think I think one person might have been hurt. I'm not sure. I don't know if it was towards one person or if it was in the air. But here's the point I want to make about this. I actually put this on my Facebook earlier today. Um, you guys can follow me anywhere on social media, The Real Sky Day. Now, if you search in Google The Real Sky Day, you will come across me on all social media platforms. Choose, choose whichever one you want and follow me there. 
But uh, I put this on my Facebook, and I was like, hey, you know what? You guys need to know this. the shots did happen, and, you know, this was all, you know, a bad deal, I guess. But, but the point I wanted to make was that the area where the memorial was held is a no-go zone or a no-go area. What that means is that there will not be very much or at all, if any, uh, police or emergency services help. So when it comes to, you know, shots ringing out, you know, you're kind of on your own. There's also a thing that says, you know, um, that whenever you're entering this no-go zone, it says, you know, at your own risk. This is at your own risk. So when you, you, walk, you walk in to do whatever you're going to do at your own risk, right? It's no one, I mean, so all the crazies will come out, is what I'm trying to say. And they can do stuff. Stuff can happen because there's no freaking, you know, law enforcement. So if you want to make a point for that towards defunding the police, that's fine too. I didn't really want to make that point here. I just want to tell you guys what was going on. So that's the update there. And I uh, hope you guys really liked what I have to offer. Like I said, this was kind of a boring show. I get it because I did current events only. I try to keep it like keep, keep it going, you know, keep it toasty. But um, all that to say, um, really just – I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say now. I've gotten it all out of me, I think. I think we're good. I think I can't talk anymore. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As always, guys, like, share, subscribe. The main one being share. Please share this. And I'm actually starting to, to sell merch. What that means is T-shirts, um, hoodies, sweatshirts, you know, all the – well, really just any, anything on, on the top. All tops. Because <laughs> I don't sell pants. I don't sell shoes or hats or anything like that. So all tops. Um, just different things. They're not all to do with a podcast. You know, I have a media company called Toasty Creations, and I'm trying to trying to expand that. That's actually this this shirt right here. If you guys want to get this hoodie, you can on my shop. That is therealskyday.com. You go to the, le- the right, on the right, sorry. Uh, it's Toasty Creations, and you just click shop, and boom, there you go. You can head on over there. But yeah, like I said, therealskyday.com. And like I said before, if you guys want to follow me or find me anywhere, The Real Sky Day in Google will get you where you need to go. Maddie B doesn't have social media, unfortunately. Within the next couple of weeks, I think actually next week, I'm going to have a guy on the show to talk about property taxes and what that means because we just had a recent election in Fort Worth, actually, Tarrant County, um, about those things. And I want him to explain to me um, the details, basically. Because he's very good at that stuff, and he's actually very involved um, in politics and uh, somewhat actually on legislative boards and stuff like that. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure, not positive. Anyway, his name's Steven. He'll be on the show, and it'll be great. I can't wait for that. Um, what else do I got? Announcements, 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 announcements. I have been thinking of the direction I want to go with this podcast, and I have come to the conclusion that... I like what I want from this podcast. I mean, it's as simple as I want to just share truth that I find, and I want. Hmm. How do I how do I word this? I don't want to do it like Ben Shapiro, Tim Pool, you know Stephen Crowder. I don't want to do that. I just I can't I can't do it. So let me just read this real quick. This is going to be my uh, take on how to stay toasty. <laughs> you know what it means because people have always asked me like, what is the toasty podcast? What is that? What does that mean? And and I figured since I'm alone on the show today, I would go ahead and do that uh, for you guys. Just so you know, if you're coming in for the first time, I have explained it before in the past, but very short, uh, brief explanations. If you're joining us now. Um, now you'll know, you know, cause our, our first episodes ever were, you know, kind of trash, <laughs> but you can check those out on Spotify or Apple if you want to and leave us a review. So we know how terrible they actually are. Anyway, I'm constantly in an internal battle because politics have become a to- so toxic to people's health mentally and physically because of the stress and hormones that come from that. And I'm not kidding. That's, that's no cap. You may ask where I'm coming from, not having any health fitness credentials. I need to be right. I have zero credentials. However, I have a bloodline that would rival anyone's. It's full of heart disease, cancer, high blood pressure, diabetes, pretty much the normal southern bloodline, no activity. So my entire life, I've made it one of my main goals to stay away from that. However, I can avoid it. I will. That includes mental health. And so, you know, I'm doing a political show. 
and I want you guys to consume that. That's fine. Yes, please consume my content. I just don't want me or my listeners to get so caught up in all of this stuff that they just forget what really matters at the end of the day. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Anyway, I because I, 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 I keep asking my qu- myself this question. And I, I keep trying to talk fast as well, and I need to slow down. That's something I always uh, was told growing up. Imagine that. So why don't we all just avoid politics altogether and get our piece of land and just stay out of it? Why don't we do that? Because why, why, why do we need to be so involved in all this stuff, constantly just having a battle and really just, just losing all the time because we're always frustrated at whatever the media has to say? I, t- I talked to a friend about it, honestly. You know, I've, I've said lately, actually, I put another post up that the Amish had it right. The Amish had it right because, and I don't know much about them because I actually, that's actually kind of the point I'm trying to make. No one really knows much about them because they stay out of everyone else's societies. They stay out of everyone else's, you know, stuff. You know, they even have regulations protecting them. It's like a little piece of, their own little piece of pie, kind of like a reservation. You know, they don't have to worry about anyone else's problems and I was saying the Amish are probably doing it right (laughs) but here's where I disagreed I talked to a friend about it and he actually was like yeah I get it and I kind of agree you know and I asked him why even do this how do I think that this will even help you know how do I think that this podcast is going to do anything and guys if you don't want to listen to this you don't have to obviously but uh, thanks for joining us Uh, I'm just going to continue and finish this real quick and then boom we're out It'll be the same as Ben Shapiro, Tim Pool, and Steven Crowder if I just keep doing what I'm doing. You know, keep talking about politics, keep talking about news outlets, keep doing this stuff and, and getting people heated up and riled up. I'm trying to do it in a way that's not like that. I'm trying to do it in a way that doesn't just get like get fuming. I'm just seeing what I see and telling you guys about that. And Matt is a very, very, very calm and collected guy. There's a reason that I asked him to be on the show in the first place, that I wanted him to be my partner because he has the credentials and he also didn't choose politics for this very reason that I'm talking about right now, but he knows his stuff and he's very a very calm dude normally. Anyway, it'll resonate inside of an echo chamber and actually go nowhere if I do that. And while I love getting listeners and I love the the, the fact that I might be able to potentially make some money from this, that's not really the point because my whole point in starting all of this was just to uh, create a change, you know. Um, you know, you ch- you uh, create the change you wish to, s- wish to see in the world or whatever. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Yeah, I, I, anyway, that's the quote, the famous quote. Uh, when I started this thing, I wanted to show the world something. I didn't know what that was, though, and I wanted to show the world uh, investing at first. That's what I first started out doing and realized very quickly there's no reason for that because every chode on your Facebook wall knows everything now. <laughs> <laughs> they all they all freaking are into it, so whatever. I, that wasn't going to do, do anything really. But it turns out politics are the same. Like I said at the very beginning of the show, everyone has cho- chosen their line. Specifically, I was talking about COVID, but really this boils down to almost everything. You've chosen your side, and so now this constant bickering just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and, and nothing really happens. But um, what I'll say is this. What I felt as far as staying away, getting my own piece of land, and just straight chilling, I feel like happens more often on the right. So going with that logic, we can see what's happened the past decade. We have digressed, in my opinion, as a society and as a government. So... How would you change that? You would you would stop sitting back and relaxing, honestly. Now let me bring up what I'm against. I'm against, like a wall, I'm against it. Not like I'm against these things as far as policy or whatever. It's not in a character sense or a moral standpoint, but like an army that I'm against, right? That's what kind of what I would see it as, but not really an army. I don't know. I'm not saying it's me against the world because it's really not. There's other people out there doing the same stuff, and it takes it takes the it takes these people. We need these people. Society's adversary is humans, right? We're all human. We all do these terrible things. 
who continue to be bad people because, you know, inherently we are bad. That's kind of how I see it. Since the beginning of time, we've been against each other because of some internal sense that we follow, even though we feel that it's wrong, right? It's becoming less and less wrong as we desensitize ourselves from it. And what's interesting to me is that, you know, that this this part of the podcast really doesn't have a lot to do with politics, but then again, it does. Like, it's it's everything you do. It's, it's all around you, right? So in the most recent decade, this is the woke culture. It makes its way into everything we do and twists its meaning in order to absolve someone of the responsibility, right? Because all of these things coming out is just absolving someone of the responsibility. No, it's not my fault. It's your fault. No, it's not me. It's you, right? That's what this is. It's literally what this is, you know? Most recently, I've seen some articles. No, you can't judge me because I'm obese. It's your fault type of thing. It's your eyes that can't see my beauty, right? And and, and that's... That's a, that's a hard argument to make, right? It's on purpose. They do that kind of thing on purpose. You're not going to tell someone they're not beautiful when every human is beautiful, but you might say they're unhealthy, and then you're canceled. So what are we really doing? If you turn back around to what I was talking about earlier, why don't we just quit and go home and stay out of the way, never letting someone know know how countries work, how economy works, or how the government works? And I was the kid in high school that didn't really give a crap about any of this. I did not care at all, a kid in high school. I was, I was this way until probably two years ago. I didn't care about any of it. Now, I was pretty involved in culture, but I just took my little piece of pie and, and walked away. I didn't really care. You know? So... Teaching anyone we can, we can, uh, hmm. oh yeah, teaching anyone we can about that and why it matters is one thing that, you know, would be a, a stand, a, 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 what is it called? A pillar of the Toasty Podcast. I don't know. Whatever. On top of that, if you're religious, do you just give up and go home? If you're religious, do you do? <clears throat> I mean, a lot, a lot of you probably do, including me sometimes, but what are we actually doing? We are convincing ourselves that we don't have any responsibility. Right? Did you hear that? We are convincing ourselves we don't have any responsibility. So when we split into factions because of an in immense inflation and separation of wealth, and all odds are against Americans, as we enter a time of civil unrest and unraveling, and I'm saying all this stuff, speculation, but you know, you've seen the previous, if you've seen the previous episodes of the Toasty Podcast or listened to them at all, you know that we are <laughs> heavy on the side of believing that speculation. <laughs> <sighs> I'm not saying this is going to happen soon, and I don't know the future, and I'll never claim to actually know the future. Speculation. However, I love speculating. Like I just said, I love speculating, and I've traded stocks, and I still trade stocks. I love investing too, so it, it kind of goes hand in hand. You can't be a skeptic without being speculative. Unfortunately, there's always a bias one way or the other. And when I first created this, co this company, this media company was, this is an unbiased podcast unbiased news source, unbiased this, unbiased that. Everything is unbiased. And while I can still actually honestly say that I can be unbiased and look at things logically with reason and see both sides objectively, sometimes I can't because I'm human. And all that to say, my purpose on this podcast is to spread truth in everything we do right now. That's politics, society, and culture. Maybe religion in the future. I don't know. I want, I want to know the roots of these things that we get into instead of the leaves that fall from those trees. I want the roots. I want to see where it comes from, and that's no pressure. So that, guys, gals, audience, people listening to this show right now, I'm glad you stuck around. That is staying toasty. So... I'll see you guys next time. Stay toasty. Toasty.